Made in Canada. G'day guys, how's it going? My name is Aussie Tash and it's time for another episode of Made in Canada where we learn about some more cool things that Canada has made and contributed to the world. Let's go with the first episode, your national game, lacrosse. Made in Canada. Creative, innovative, and sometimes mind-boggling contributions Canadians have made to the world. Fast-paced, requiring quick reflexes and skill at ball handling and passing, lacrosse likely originated in the 1300s or 1400s among the Huron, Algonquian, and Iroquois. Despite popularity among First Nations as far south as Mexico, only Canada in 1859 made lacrosse an official sport. That's cool. Parliament reaffirmed it as our official summer sport in 1994. Early lacrosse games called bagatoe in Algonquian, meaning they bump hips, would last from sunup to sundown, sometimes for several days. They played for a full day. Part religious ritual, part military training, and part intertribal negotiation. Games took place in the open. Wow. Goals might be half a mile apart, and teams could have hundreds of players. Sticks were <laughs> three to four feet long tipped with small nets for catching and holding a hair-stuffed deerskin ball or a stone. French Jesuit missionary Jean de Brébeuf called the game La Crosse because the sticks resembled the cross carried by bishops. Okay. By the 1840s, French and other settlers were playing the game, adding rules for fewer players, shorter sticks, and smaller fields. La Crosse blended European and First Nations cultures though it would be a while before any settlers team could best a First Nations team. Okay, lacrosse. Did you guys know the history around lacrosse? That's absolutely incredible how far the game actually date back to. They played it all day, man, and they used it as a war training skills as well. That was an incredible episode to hear about. Lacrosse, I don't know if we have a national team. I don't know if Australia plays it a lot. I'll have to look into it. Guys, that was a cool episode. Let's keep on going with some more. Made in Canada. Creative, innovative, and sometimes mind-boggling contributions Canadians have made to the world. Poutine is gooey, oh. artery-clogging, and delicious. <laughs> and if you're Canadian, you've probably scarfed down a serving or three at some point. The Quebecois delicacy, French fries topped with cheese curds and drenched in gravy, has become part of Canada's <laughs> cultural identity. It looks so good, man. While the comfort food's popularity is clear-cut, its origins are anything but with okay. several Quebec-based chefs and restaurants claiming to be its inventor. Mm. Fernand Lachance of Warwick, Quebec, has often been credited as the definitive poutine creator. As the story goes, in 1957, a trucker came into his restaurant and ordered fries. But when the trucker saw cheese curds sitting on the counter, he asked Lachance to add them to the fries. Okay. Lachance did as the customer ordered, but is reported to have called the concoction un madit poutine. Translation, a hell of a mess. <laughs> it looks Chance pretty began messy. adding gravy to the mixture in 1964. Among others vying for the title of Poutine's originator is John Paul Roy, who says his Drummondville restaurant was serving Poutine with gravy by 1956, but okay. under another name. Whoever invented this delicious concoction, Poutine is a distinctly Canadian treat. There you go, the origin of who made Poutine. Highly debatable. Who come up with poutine? They don't really know. But I'm telling you now, it looks so, so good. I cannot wait to go to Canada and try me some authentic poutine. There is a restaurant in Brisbane that sells authentic Canadian poutine. I'm not quite too sure how they do it because you can't buy cheese curds in Australia. It's, I think it's illegal. I'm not quite too sure why, but yeah. How they get it, not quite too sure. Made in Canada. Creative, innovative, and sometimes mind-boggling contributions Canadians have made to the world. Imagine flying around the earth in a space shuttle. Outside your porthole floats something shiny and strange. You'd love to grab it for a better look, but without gravity, everything you reach for spins away the second you touch it. This problem frustrated astronauts at NASA until 1981. That was the year that a group of Canadian engineers in Brampton, Ontario 
finished building an out-of-this-world invention, the Canadar. This 15-meter robotic arm reaches out from a space what? shuttle to launch or retrieve objects in outer space. Astronauts operate the arm remotely using special controllers. The Canadarm has been instrumental in space research and oh, I think so. That's more than so 50 cool. missions. It has been used for all sorts of projects, from retrieving satellites to fixing the Hubble telescope to building the International Space Station. Oh, that's really cool, Canada. Really, really cool. That invention is literally out of this world. Well done to Canada. That is super, super cool. And also, a congratulations to your astronaut, Canadian astronaut, Jeremy Hansen, will be going up in 2024, traveling to the moon. That is really, really cool. That was a fantastic little episode, totally out of this world. Let's keep on going. The Blackberry. No way. I know the Blackberry. Are you serious? Made in Canada. Okay. Creative, innovative, and sometimes mind-boggling contributions Canadians have made to the world. Mike Lazaridis, a Turkish-Canadian raised in Windsor, Ontario, has always loved technology. As a kid, he spent countless hours tinkering with radios, telephones, and other gadgets, trying to understand how they worked. When he was in high school, he built his own computer. In the late 1990s, Lazaridis invented a handheld wireless device that would eventually what? be used to make telephone calls, send and receive emails, and browse the internet. <laughs> At first, Lazaridis and his team thought of calling this speedy new device the Strawberry, because <laughs> strawberry. the keys on its tiny keypad reminded them of strawberry seeds. Yeah, I can but see But in the that. end, the device was named after a snappier sounding fruit, the Blackberry. The Blackberry helps people around the world communicate wirelessly. It has also been a useful communication tool in emergencies when phone lines and power lines are down. Oh my god. In 2010, there were more than 14 million BlackBerry subscribers. Now that's a popular invention. That is quite a popular invention. Oh my gosh, I had no idea about the BlackBerry and that it was invented in Canada. Of course I had an idea of the BlackBerry. Who didn't own a BlackBerry back in the day? That is an absolutely incredible, world-changing invention. Made in Let's see what Canada. this is about. Creative, innovative, and sometimes mind-boggling contributions Canadians have made to the world. Alexander Graham Bell is best known for inventing the telephone. Yes, he is. But he was also behind the creation of some of the world's first flying machines, including human-carrying kites. Bell designed a variety of kites at his summer home in Baddock, Nova Scotia. He wanted to figure out which kite shape would be strong enough to carry a person in the air. Okay. Eventually, he found that the best shape was the tetrahedron, a triangular pyramid. In 1905, Bell built a tetrahedral kite called the Frost King, which accidentally lifted one of its handlers nine meters above the ground. Nine meters! A couple years later, oh Bell and his associates built a larger tetrahedral kite, the Signet. This one flew for seven minutes at a height of 51 meters. That's pretty cool, man. On board. With a man on board. Oh, that's even cooler, eh? That was such a cool story, man. I just can't believe. I love this playlist. I love discovering and finding out all the cool things that have been invented and come from Canada. Some of these inventions, man, in this episode were out of this world. Literally out of this world. That was one of my favorite episodes of Made in Canada I've seen so far. Guys, if you like this video, please jump on, smash the like button, leave a comment, and remember to subscribe. That really helps me out. Cheers from down under. Thanks for making all the cool inventions. Take care. Bye.